Hi guys, we are going to discuss anesthetic considerations for bronchoscopic procedures. I want to mention that I have nothing to disclose and this video is made only for educational purpose. And it is based on theoretical part and not on practical part with video of appliance of bronchoscopes which are flexible or rigid one. So let's start with objectives, so explain the various anesthesia techniques used for bronchoscopy, including indications for each of them, describe importance of safety when performing this procedure, a bronchoscopy, review uh, the potential complications of performing a procedure and summarize the pros and cons to be kept in mind by the interprofessional team in case of flexible and rigid bronchoscopy because of this procedure is done by uh, mostly by one uh, one doctor but is assisted by anesthesiologists, nurses, assistants and so on. Different anesthesia techniques can be used for bronchoscopy uh, due to both the anesthesiologists and clinicians sharing the same working space at that time. Special attention must be made to ensure safety, safety of patient and safety of all the team members. So two types of bronchoscopies are known like uh, flexible and rigid. Flexible bronchoscopy is done under sedation and rigid bronchoscopy is performed under a general anesthesia. In US uh, annually uh, over 500 uh, thousands bronchoscopies are performed and the uh, pre-procedure assessment should be done that includes the patient's past medical history, medications, airway exam and time since less oral intake. So as usual we do an assessment and examination of the patient and the history. Additionally, pulmonary function tests and arterial blood gas can offer valuable information about the patient's pulmonary function. As instrumentation from the bronchoscopy may include complications including bronchospasm, laryngospasm and airway obstruction. And of course, uh, a short time obstruction of airways during the insertion of this bronchoscope. The standard ASA or American Society of Anesthesiology monitors should always be used. So pulse oximeter, electrocardiogram, blood, blood pressure devices to measure and temperature control. Patients might become, become apneic even with minimal sedation and it, it necessitates a light sedation or a medium sedation or deep sedation even but with monitoring. Anesthesia, anesthesia provider should be prepared to intervene if a patient is not responding, is apneic and rapid oxygen desaturations occur and airway obstructions. Airway interventions include nasopharyngeal trumpet, back mask, ventilation, oral intubation with, uh, of course, endotracheal tube, not nasotracheal. Uh, the anesthetic plan is based on the technique of anesthesia used in conjunction with uh, patient comorbidities. For example, someone uh, may necessitate uh, appliance of some medications or also known as pre-medication to accord patient to the desired status. So both the bronchoscopy operator and the anesthesia team must agree on the anesthetic plan. It means that the bronchoscopy operator asks for some type of anesthesia and uh, anesthesiologist accommodate to this one. Uh, let's go to, uh, through the types of anesthesia. So topical anesthesia or local anesthetic, uh, which is applied typically lidocaine and is used to produce a topical anesthesia to the posterior oral cavity and base of the tongue. It can be done by a uh, uh, patient to make some gargle of 1% lidocaine with optional additional lidocaine applied by spraying into the oropharynx and uh, laryngopharynx. 
Or else exist uh, sprays like 10% lidocaine, which are applied, but gargle of 1% lidocaine is pretty well uh, done. There is potential for aspiration due to uh, relaxation of the pharyng pharyngeal and laryngeal muscles. Uh, topical anesthesia is often used in conjunction with uh, monitored anesthesia care or total intravenous anesthesia. So we can start with uh, local anesthetic appliance and after we do a sedation as well. Our regional anesthesia is to uh, make a superior laryngeal nerve block and it is not done uh, so often as uh, you have to to block a superior laryngeal nerve that uh, block uh, will blunt the cuff reflex which is very sensitive to airway irritation it ne necessitates precise positioning of the superior laryngeal nerve block which is important due to potential of injury of surrounding uh, structures relative to the nerve as uh, a superior laryngeal nerve uh, internal branch runs with the superior laryngeal artery just below the greater corner of the hyoid, the block needle should be positioned perpendicular. And of course, with ultrasonography uh, technique to, uh, to adjust. Potential complications include tracheal injection, arterial nerve injection, steroid injection, and even hematoma. There is a risk of local anesthetic uh, uh, systemic toxicity because of injection of local anesthetic into the vessel, artery or uh, vein doesn't matter. So a 20% lipid emulsion should be uh, immediately available to uh, administer to patient as you know lipids uh, couples with uh, local anesthetic and decrease the toxicity availability in the blood as a free one and active. Monitored anesthesia care is commonly utilized, utilized anesthesia type for bronchoscopy and uh, medications uh, used uh, are midazolam, fentanyl, propofol, or remifentanyl, dexmedetomidine, and ketamine. Uh, the most common combination is propofol plus midazolam. The special considerations for elder patients need to be taken as they are more prone to become becoming apneic and even lower doses uh, necessitate than the younger uh, general population. And the most common used sedative medication is propofol due to some uh, rapid onset effects, antiemetic at even 20 mg dose, anticonvulsant, antipruritic and uh, bronchodilator properties. And it is also suitable uh, for patients with renal and hepatic insufficiency. And of course, have side effects like hypotension, respiratory depression, and pain during injection, but very rare. Uh, TIVA or TIVA or total intravenous uh, anesthesia uh, is a form of general anesthesia in which medications are administered solely intravenously because. Uh, it is uh, useful in rigid bronchoscopy as ventilation is often interrupted and there is applied jet ventilation at the tip of the bronchoscope to administer oxygen at high uh, velocity and pressure. And commonly using uh, jet ventilation and near muscle blocking agent for complete muscle paralysis in conjunction with sedative hypnotic. TIVA is indicated for patients with absolute contraindications to inhalation agents such as uh, such as with history of malignant hypersermia. And you know malignant hypersermia can be declared by inhalatory anesthetics and neuromuscle blockers like succinylcholine. Uh, general anesthesia is uh, used uh, when patients require deeper sedation and must have their airway secured via the endotracheal tube or laryngeal mask airway. A bronchoscope can be inserted through these airway devices using specialized adapters. If uh, is applied in the tracheal tube, it is decided to uh, apply a tube of greater caliber, not the uh, smallest one. And sharing an airway has potential complications like 
including airway obstruction, uh, mechanical trauma, inadequate ventilation, barotrauma, inadequate anesthetic level with possible awareness during the procedure, laryngospasm and bronchospasm. As any, uh, anything that is inserted in the airways can declare vasospasm and constriction of airways as this is a mechanism for protection to stop the object or uh, uh, the foreign body to do not pass uh, distally. Hemodynamic instability may require the use of vasoactive medications and a family of a family history of malignant hyperthermia, including uh, unexplained deaths during of uh, short anesthesia or general anesthesia should promptly uh, should prompt the anesthesia provider to switch uh, to a safer anesthetic choice, such as total intravenous anesthetic, and avoid volatile agents as well as uh, uh, neuromuscular blocker like um, succinylcholine. So jet ventilation during bronchoscopy requires oxygen delivery at high pressure, high pressure and high velocity of oxygen, which has unique and potentially catastrophic sequela like barotrauma and rapid deterioration of oxygen saturation and carbon uh, dioxide levels during the jet uh, ventilation procedure uh, should alert the provider to the possibility of pneumothorax. If uh, tension pneumothorax is suspected, uh, then rapid uh, needle decompression should be applied. And of course, in a second intercostal space, uh, if we go into the midclavicular line and must be performed to prevent cardiorespiratory collapse. Uh, complications of bronchoscopy include hypoxemia, airway obstruction, laryngospasm, calf bleeding, and bleeding inside the airways and going distally. Airway fire uh, as oxygen is uh, delivered, pneumothorax, tension pneumothorax, and air emboli. Uh, complications occurrence varies between 0.4 to 1%. Comorbidities play a big role in the complication rate, as does the anesthesia provider and bronchoscopy technicians expertise. So experience of the uh, doctor or technician who uh, do this procedure is very important. A bronchoscopy should uh, occur in an operating room where the necessary equipment for airway management is readily available. And it is especially for a rigid bronchoscopy. Bronchoscopy patients require extensive suctioning as secretions build up in oral uh, airway. A common a complication of bronchoscopy is aspiration pneumonia, in which gastric or and or oropharyngeal fluids enter the lungs. A flexible bronchoscopy is more sa safety and can be done in intensive care or even in a uh, any unit, therapeutic like or uh, surgical mostly. Uh, issue of concern, so rapid onset fever, cough, dyspnea, and crackless on lung auscultation are common signs of clinical features uh, for aspiration. And conditions that predispose uh, to aspiration pneumonia are, of course, altered mental uh, status or consciousness, dysphagia, neurologic disorders, pharyngeal anesthesia, increase in age or elder patient, uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease, gastroparesis, and poor dental hygiene. Treatment include immediate suctioning and turning the patient's head to the side to prevent uh, further aspiration. Oxygen delivery during bronchoscopy is a special consideration due to the instruments introduced during uh, the procedures that necessitates a shared airway. So a shared airway is like preoccupied with instruments which are inside and oxygen delivery is very important. Oxygen is typically delivered via a nasal cannula, but a laryngeal mask or endotracheal tube uh, can be used. Our clinical significance, a flexible bronchoscope can be performed at the bedside and under moderate sedation, the patient is 
spontaneously breathing, the bronchoscope can be easily maneuvered in airways, but can produce also laryngeal edema, bleeding, and pneumothorax. Uh, in times that a uh, rigid bronchoscope can be inserted uh, past airway obstruction, the only uh, benefit, but must be performed in the operating room, oral and pharyngeal damage can be uh, produced, limited visualization and non-flexible uh, metal rod. And the last line is an interprofessional team uh, for bronchoscopy include uh, bronchoscopy operators like pulmonologists or intensivists or which one have uh, passed this uh, course that it's necessary to operate with anesthesiologists, nurse anesthetists, uh, nurses, operating room technicians, pharmacists, and of course, interprofessional team approach that emphasizes good communication will offer the best patient outcome. Thank you for your watching. If you want to read by yourself, you can uh, find on internet NCBI article on uh, bronchoscopy. And this video lecture is done, of course, for educational purpose, and I have nothing to disclose. Have a good time, guys.